Remote Desktop Services is just plain awesome. With it, I can deploy an application to anywhere with a network connection, whether it be across the street, across the planet, all the way to Mars. It doesn't matter. Well, one of the hard parts, however, with remote desktop services are all the ridiculous acronyms and all the components that have to integrate together to create that RDS experience. Keeping them straight is really one of the hardest parts. And so in this recent series on the uh, CBT Nugget series on the 70-415 exam, I spent a minute to help you deconstruct the SH from the WA, from the CB, and all the other bits in between. Come take a look. So let's start actually with the user. So I have my user here. And the user needs to connect to some application. Well, the way in which they connect to an application, at least initially, in this world, the, the Server 2012 RDS world, is through the remote desktop web access server. Now that can mean a couple of different things. Number one, you actually go to an actual website to get your applications. Or number two, built into Windows 7 and Windows 8, there is a thing called Remote App and Desktop Connection, which allows you to automate the provisioning of those apps directly into that user's desktop. So right into their start menu and right into their desktop uh, for desktop shortcuts. Uh, we will see more about that coming up in a, in a future nugget. But for now, recognize that the that in the 2012 world, the RDWA is kind of your your I don't know, your gateway as it will. It's a bad word because there's a rote desktop gateway as well. But your RDWA is kind of the, the entry point, the hopping on point for an RDS environment. From RDWA, there is built in, or sort of the next hop there is the remote desktop connection broker, which in the old days, the RDCB was only really just a database. So the RDCB's job was essentially to take these incoming connections and then load balance them out to any of the remote desktop session host servers that exist in the environment. Now, these RDSH servers are essentially what we used to think of as terminal servers, and they're the ones that contain the applications. Right? So you're going to install Microsoft Office onto all of these machines, and that's what your users are going to remotely use when they're using Office. Well, in 2012, the RDCB gets a little bit more intelligent in that it becomes the, the database of which users are on which machines. And it also now has some abilities to do some of the routing between these different hosts. Back in previous versions, a lot of people forgot when they installed the RDCB, you would need to also have some sort of load balancer in addition to the RDCB itself. So load balancer, which could have been a DNS round robin or could be t typically an NLB cluster, one of these two options here. You don't necessarily have to have these anymore, right? Uh, a lot of this so this load balancing bits are built into the RD, RDCB these days. And so once you light it up, it just sort of handles a lot of the stuff for you. This is really awesome because, again, the idea here is simplifying the process of getting applications delivered out to those users. And that's a very good... Want to learn more? Check out cptnuggets.com.